Imagine standing at the foot of a mountain. The peak seems impossibly high, shrouded in mist. But here's the twist. That mountain isn't some far-off challenge. It's you. The actual summit you need to conquer is right here in your mind. Welcome to the real battle. You versus you, overcoming your biggest obstacles. Guided by the timeless wisdom of Stoic philosophy, we embark on a journey of self-discovery and growth. Every day we face battles, but the toughest opponent you'll ever encounter isn't out there. It's the person staring back at you in the mirror. As the great Stoic philosopher Epictetus once said, the chief task in life is simply this, to identify and separate matters so that I can say clearly to myself which are externals not under my control and which have to do with the choices I actually control. But why listen to some ancient Greeks and Romans? Their wisdom has stood the test of time, guiding emperors and enslaved people alike. And today, it's more relevant than ever. The Stoics offer a roadmap to inner peace and true success in a world of constant distractions and instant gratification. Let's start with a modern example. Think about the last time you scrolled through social media, feeling envy at someone else's achievements. That's not your real battle. Your real battle is with the voice that says you're not good enough. As Marcus Aurelius, the philosopher king, wrote in his journal, you have power over your mind, not outside events. Realize this, and you will find strength. Over the next sections, we will tackle the most significant obstacles between you and your best self. We'll dive deep into 10 core lessons from Stoicism. Taming your ego, conquering procrastination, building unshakable discipline, overcoming distractions, breaking bad habits, silencing self-doubt, facing your fears, fueling your body and mind, letting go of toxic influences, and pushing beyond your comfort zone. But here's the kicker. This isn't just another self-help guide. We're not here to offer quick fixes or empty promises. This is about real, lasting change. As Musonius Rufus, the Roman Socrates said, we should not be learning in order to make speeches, but in order to conduct ourselves properly. Now you might be thinking, great, another text telling me just to try harder. But that's not what this is about. The Stoics weren't about gritting your teeth and powering through. They were about understanding yourself, aligning your actions with your values, and finding true fulfillment. Take Zeno of Citium, the founder of Stoicism. After losing everything in a shipwreck, he didn't just give up. He saw it as an opportunity to start fresh and pursue wisdom. That's the kind of resilience and perspective we're aiming for. By the end of this text, you'll have practical tools to overcome your internal obstacles. You'll understand how to harness the power of your mind, just as Cleanthes, who worked as a water carrier by night to study philosophy by day, harnessed his determination to become one of the great Stoic teachers. But remember, knowledge without action is just philosophy. Real change comes from applying these principles in your daily life. Seneca wisely said, Luck is what happens when preparation meets opportunity. So, are you ready to prepare? Are you ready to take on your most formidable opponent, yourself? The journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. Your journey to becoming the best version of yourself starts right now. Let's begin. Lesson 1. Taming the Ego. The Ego that voice inside telling you you're the best or perhaps the worst is a powerful force, but often a misleading one. Let's start with a stoic quote. You are not your reputation. You are not what other people think of you. You are not even what you think of yourself. Powerful words. But what do they mean in practice? Imagine you've just received praise for a job well done. Your ego swells, telling you you're invincible. Or picture a moment of failure, your ego crumbling, convinced you're worthless. Both extremes are illusions. The Stoics understood that our egos often lead us astray. Epictetus wisely said, It's impossible to learn that which one thinks one already knows. 
An inflated ego closes our eyes to our flaws and stunts our growth. On the flip side, a bruised ego can paralyze us with self-doubt. So, how do we tame this beast? Let's break it down. Practice humility. Zeno of Sidium taught. We have two ears and one mouth, so we should listen more than we say. Try listening instead next time you're tempted to boast or defend your ego. You might be surprised by what you learn. Embrace criticism. Instead of seeing criticism as an attack, view it as free advice. Cleanthes, who was often ridiculed for his humble background, used this derision as fuel for self-improvement. Separate your actions from your worth. You are not your successes or failures. As Seneca put it, he who boasts of his descent praises the deeds of another. Your actions don't define you, they're growth opportunities. Practice self-deprecating humor. Laugh at yourself occasionally. It keeps you humble and approachable. Even Emperor Marcus Aurelius wasn't above poking fun at himself in his journals. Focus on progress, not perfection. Musonius Rufus taught, If you accomplish something good with hard work, the labor passes quickly, but the good endures. If you do something shameful in pursuit of pleasure, the pleasure passes quickly, but the shame endures. Remember, taming your ego isn't about destroying your self-esteem. It's about finding a balance, confident enough to pursue your goals, humble enough to acknowledge your flaws and keep learning. Social media often feeds our egos with likes and follows. In our modern world, try this exercise. Next time you're about to post something, ask yourself, Am I doing this to share genuinely or to feed my ego? This simple pause can be eye-opening. Heracles, a lesser-known Stoic, proposed an exercise of expanding circles of concern. Start with yourself, then your family, friends, community, and eventually all humanity. This perspective shift can help shrink an overinflated ego. As we wrap up this chapter, remember, your ego is a tool, not your master. Use it to motivate yourself, but don't let it define you. In the words of Seneca, it is not the man who has too little, but the man who craves more, that is poor. In our next chapter, we'll tackle another formidable foe, procrastination. But I challenge you to catch your ego in action this week. Notice when it flares up and practice one of the discussed techniques. Share your experiences in the comments below. Remember, the battle against your ego is ongoing. But with each small victory, you're one step closer to becoming the master of your mind. Stay strong, stay humble, and I'll see you in the next chapter. Lesson 2. Conquering Procrastination In our last chapter, we tackled the ego. Now we face another formidable foe, procrastination. That obnoxious habit of putting off until tomorrow, what we know we should do today. Let's begin with a powerful quote from Seneca. While we are postponing, life speeds by. How often have we felt the sting of those words? Procrastination isn't just about laziness. It's a complex beast often fueled by fear, perfectionism, or overwhelm. The Stoics recognized this struggle thousands of years ago, and their wisdom can help us overcome it today. Epictetus said, No great thing is created suddenly, any more than a bunch of grapes or a fig. If you tell me that you desire a fig, I answer that there must be time. Let it first blossom, then bear fruit, then ripen. This reminds us that meaningful work takes time, but it also implies that we must start for anything to grow. So how do we stop procrastinating and start doing? Let's break it down. Break tasks into smaller steps. Remember, do not be dismayed by the whole of your task. Attend to the day's portion. When a task seems overwhelming, divide it into manageable sections. Start with the hardest task. 
Epictetus taught, we should discipline ourselves in small things and from there progress to things of greater value. Try tackling your most challenging task first thing in the morning when your willpower is strongest. Use the five minute rule. Commit to working on a task for just five minutes. Often, getting started is the hardest part, but once you begin, you'll likely continue. Practice visualizing the process, not just the outcome. Instead of just imagining the completed project, visualize yourself working on it. The mental rehearsal can make starting feel more manageable. Embrace imperfection. Zeno of Sidium said, well-being is realized by small steps, but it is truly no small thing. Remember, done is better than perfect. Now let's address a modern challenge, digital distraction. Our phones and computers, while useful tools, can be procrastination enablers. Try this stoic-inspired technique. Before you check your phone or open a new browser tab, pause and ask, is this essential right now? This moment of reflection can break the automatic habit of digital distraction. Hierocles suggested an exercise of examining our day in reverse each evening. Try this. At the end of each day, reflect on what you accomplished and what you put off. Don't judge. Observe. This practice can increase your awareness of procrastination patterns. Remember, overcoming procrastination isn't about becoming a productivity machine. It's about aligning your actions with your values and making steady progress toward your goals. As Marcus Aurelius wisely said, waste no more time arguing about what a good man should be. Be one. So this week, try one of the techniques we've discussed. Whether it's the five minute rule or tackling your hardest task first, take action. Share your experiences in the comments below. Lesson three. Building Unshakable Discipline We've conquered ego and tackled procrastination. Now it's time to build something lasting, unshakable discipline. Discipline is the bridge between goals and accomplishment. As Epictetus said, no man is free who is not master of himself. But discipline isn't about harsh self-denial. It's about creating habits that align with our true selves. Consider Marcus Aurelius, the philosopher emperor, who faced constant demands yet remained disciplined in his duties. His secret, a focus on what's within his control. He wrote, you have power over your mind, not outside events. Realize this and you will find strength. Let's explore how we can cultivate such discipline. Define your why. Clear purpose fuels discipline. Why do you want to achieve this goal? Write it down, reflect on it, let it be your guiding star. Create a routine. As Musonius Rufus taught, to act rightly is to act habitually. Establish a daily routine that includes your priorities. Routines reduce decision fatigue and build momentum. Set small, achievable goals. Seneca wisely said, he who is everywhere is nowhere. Focus on one small step at a time. Each small success builds confidence and discipline. Embrace discomfort. Discipline often requires doing what's difficult. Zeno of Citium taught that adversity is an opportunity for growth. When you face a challenge, remind yourself, this is where I grow. Practice self-reflection. At the end of each day, reflect on your actions. As Heracles suggested, examine your day. What did you do well? Where can you improve? This practice increases self-awareness and reinforces discipline. In our modern world, we face constant distractions. Technology, while beneficial, can erode discipline if we're not mindful. Try this stoic-inspired exercise. Set specific times for checking emails and social media. Outside those times, focus on your tasks. This creates boundaries and enhances focus. Remember, discipline isn't about perfection. It's about persistence. As Epictetus said, no great thing is created suddenly. Be patient with yourself. Celebrate small victories. 
Each step, no matter how small, brings you closer to your goal. Lesson 4. Overcoming Distractions We've built discipline. Now let's tackle distractions. In our hyper-connected world, distractions are a constant threat to our focus and productivity. But the Stoics face distractions too. Though different in nature, the principles they develop to overcome them are timeless. Epictetus said, If a person gave away your body to some passerby, you would be furious. Yet you hand over your mind to anyone who comes along, so they may abuse you, leaving it disturbed and troubled. Have you no shame in that? Powerful words, reminding us that our attention is precious. Let's explore how to protect it. Prioritize what's important. As Marcus Aurelius wrote, ask yourself at every moment, is this necessary? Before you dive into a task, pause and ask this question. Focus on what truly matters. Create a distraction-free environment. Zeno Obsidium emphasized the importance of a conducive environment for study. Find a quiet space. Remove unnecessary clutter. Set yourself up for success. Practice mindfulness. Seneca taught, he suffers more than necessary, who suffers before it is necessary. Often, distractions are born from worries about the future. Practice being present. Focus on the task at hand. Set clear boundaries. Musonius Rufus believed in the power of self-restraint. Set specific times for focused work. Communicate these boundaries to others. Protect your time. Take regular breaks. Epictetus advised, neither should a ship rely on one small anchor, nor should life rest on a single hope. Balance is key. Take short breaks to recharge. Step away from your work. Clear your mind. Let's address a modern challenge. Digital distractions. Our devices are designed to capture our attention. Try this stoic-inspired technique. Schedule technology-free periods. During these times, disconnect from your devices. Use this time for deep work or meaningful activities. Lesson 5. Breaking bad habits. We've conquered distractions. Now let's tackle a more insidious challenge. Breaking bad habits. Bad habits are like weeds in a garden. They can choke our growth and undermine our best efforts. But the Stoics offer timeless wisdom to uproot these habits and cultivate healthier ones. Epictetus said, First, say to yourself what you would be, and then do what you have to do. This quote reminds us that change starts with a clear vision of who we want to become. Let's explore how to break bad habits. Identify the trigger. Every habit has a trigger. Marcus Aurelius wrote, Look within. Within is the fountain of good, and it will ever bubble up if you will ever dig. Reflect on what triggers your bad habit. Awareness is the first step. Replace the habit. Zeno of Sidium taught that nature abhors a vacuum. Don't just eliminate a bad habit. Replace it with a positive one. If you habitually reach for junk food, replace it with a healthier snack. Practice self-control. Seneca said, He who conquers himself is the mightiest warrior. When you feel the urge to engage in a bad habit, pause. Take a deep breath. Remind yourself of your goals. Use visualization. Musonius Rufus believed in the power of the mind. Visualize yourself successfully breaking the habit. See yourself making healthier choices. This mental rehearsal strengthens your resolve. Seek support. Epictetus advised, We are not alone. We must find others to support us. Share your goal with a friend or mentor. Accountability can provide the extra push you need. In our modern world, bad habits often stem from stress and convenience. Try this stoic-inspired exercise. Create a habit journal. Track your triggers, actions, and feelings. Reflect on your progress. This practice increases self-awareness and helps you stay on track. Lesson 6. Silencing Self-Doubt. We've tackled bad habits. Now, let's confront a more personal enemy, self-doubt. That nagging voice that tells you you're not good enough, 
that you can't succeed. The Stoics face this too, and their wisdom can help us silence that voice. Epictetus said, first say to yourself what you would be, and then do what you have to do. This quote reminds us that our actions define us, not our doubts. Let's explore how to silence self-doubt. Identify your strengths. Marcus Aurelius wrote, Dwell on the beauty of life. Watch the stars and see yourself running with them. Reflect on your strengths and achievements. Focus on what you do well. Challenge negative thoughts. Zeno of Citium taught that our thoughts shape our reality. When self-doubt creeps in, challenge it. Ask yourself, is this true? Replace negative thoughts with positive affirmations. Take action. Seneca said, we suffer more often in imagination than in reality. Often self-doubt paralyzes us. Take small steps toward your goal. Action builds confidence. Seek feedback. Musonius Rufus believed in the power of feedback. Ask for feedback from trusted friends or mentors. Constructive criticism can help you improve and boost your confidence. Practice self-compassion. Epictetus advised, if you want to improve, be content to be thought foolish and stupid. Be kind to yourself. Everyone makes mistakes. Learn from them and move on. In our modern world, Social media often fuels self-doubt. Try this stoic-inspired exercise. Limit your social media use. Focus on your journey, not others. Remember, everyone's path is different. Lesson 7. Building Resilience. We've silenced self-doubt. Now let's build resilience. Life is full of challenges, and resilience is the key to navigating them. The Stoics knew this well. As Seneca said, Difficulties strengthen the mind, as labor does the body. Let's explore how to build resilience. Embrace challenges. Marcus Aurelius wrote, The impediment to action advances action. What stands in the way becomes the way. See challenges as opportunities for growth. Embrace them. Focus on what you can control. Epictetus said, It's not what happens to you, but how you react to it that matters. Focus on your response to challenges. You have control over your actions and attitude. Develop a growth mindset. Zeno of Citium taught that our potential is limitless. See failures as learning experiences. Believe in your ability to grow and improve. Seek support. Musonius Rufus believed in the power of community. Surround yourself with supportive people. Share your struggles and seek their advice. Practice self-care. Seneca said, As is a tale, so is life. Not how long it is, but how good it is, is what matters. Take care of your physical and mental well-being. Rest, exercise, and engage in activities that bring you joy. In our modern world, resilience is more important than ever. Try this stoic-inspired exercise. Write a resilience journal. Document your challenges, how you overcame them, and what you learned. This practice reinforces your resilience and provides a source of inspiration during tough times. In the comments below, share your experiences with building resilience. What strategies help you stay strong? What challenges do you face? Your insights can inspire others. Remember, Resilience is a skill you can develop. Each challenge you overcome makes you stronger. Stay resilient, stay hopeful, and I'll see you in the next chapter.